Let's discuss now with Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois. He sits on both the House Intel and Oversight Committees, two key committees to the current investigations. Congressman, thanks for taking the time this morning. Thank you, Jim. Let me begin first with the president's decision to overrule his senior most advisors, but also the recommendations, apparently, the intelligence agencies to issue both his daughter and his son-in-law uh, top secret security clearances. You, you sit on the House Intelligence Committee. Do you know, do you have any information as to what the concerns were of the intelligence agencies to not issue those top secret clearances? Well, uh, thanks for having me on. I don't know. Um, uh, the concerns with regard to Ivanka Trump. Um, however, the concerns with regard to Jared Kushner are very well known. Um, for the last two years, I've been beating the drum with regard to Jared Kushner's security clearance. He had numerous errors and omissions with regard to unreported foreign contacts. He has tremendous financial vulner vulnerabilities, which make him uh, susceptible to compromise and manipulation. And then finally, most of the law enforcement community who looked at his particular case um, specifically said he should not have access to top secret security clearance. So uh, when the president then uh, overrode that and directed them to give him security clearance, um, he went, he flew in the face of, um, his decision flew in the face of what uh, the career professional said. And he also um, uh, said later on that he had nothing to do with that decision. So now we're finding that uh, uh, actually the truth is much different. Let me ask you this, because of course a top secret clearance gives someone access to the nation's most sensitive secrets and, yes. and classified information. That's right. With the president here overruling the recommendations of the intelligence agencies to grant these clearances to family members, we should note, is he himself mishandling the nation's secrets to grant that access? Possibly. Um, you know, basically, uh, it's true that the president has a prerogative to issue uh, uh, clearance uh, to uh, people that he designates. However, it's our duty to perform oversight, and that's why Chairman Cummings is absolutely correct that there has to be transparency on the process. He's repeatedly requested documents about this, um, and they have refused voluntary compliance. Um, I should just note that I authored uh, a law uh, which was an amendment to the Secret Act which required the White House to explain its security process. That was signed into law by President Trump. He then promptly violated the law and didn't actually explain the security clearance process. And now he's refusing, refusing voluntary compliance with Chairman Cummings' repeated requests. Right. Let me ask you this then. Uh, the, the White House has already refused to, to deliver documents related to Jared's uh, sec security clearance. Whether they do the same on Ivanka is still a little open question. But uh, in light of that, should the chairman of the Oversight Committee, should he subpoena those records? I think Chairman Cummings has made it very clear uh, that the subpoena power is potentially the next step. I would be very supportive if that's the direction that he decides to go. Um, I think that uh, he has shown extreme patience at this point in terms of uh, repeatedly asking for the documents and uh, their refusal to comply flies directly against our constitutional duty of oversight. Let me ask you this, of course, as you know, Michael Cohen just arrived on the Hill. He's now testifying in closed session. Uh, it, it was one of your questions last week in public session that, that, that made the most news. I want to replay it to remind our viewers that I want to ask you about it. Have a listen. Is there any other wrongdoing or illegal act that you are aware of regarding Donald Trump that we haven't yet discussed today? Yes, and again, those are part of the investigation that's currently being looked at by the Southern District of New York. Have you since learned what that investigation, that to that point we did not know about, an additional investigation of the president, have you since learned what that pertains to? I have not yet. Will you ask him about it today, and, and is it something he could speak about in closed session to a degree he could not in public session? I can't get into specific testimony or lines of questioning in the Intel Committee. However, I, it suffices to say that um, there's a lot of uh, question marks surrounding that particular answer that he gave. Uh, my big concern, I think Chairman Schiff has shared this concern as well, which is that uh, we can't just rely on the Southern District of New York or other investigating authorities to their job because William Barr and the Department of Justice is now saying that they may not turn over the findings to Congress. And so I believe that we in Congress have a duty to actually uh, investigate some of these misdeeds ourselves um, and get to the bottom of what happened.
Yeah, you might say that Americans have a right to know if there's a, a, an additional uh, yes, criminal yes, investigation of, of, a sitting, yes, of a sitting president. I, yes, I do sir. want to ask you a bigger, bigger picture about the range of investigations by Democrats today. As you know, uh, demands going to, to more than 80 individuals, organizations, we'll put a list up on the screen, uh, connected to the president here. Uh, even some Democrats have warned that this is so wide-ranging that it gives the impression of Democrats casting too wide a net here. Uh, is that fair criticism? Well, I mean, you, you saw the hearing with Michael Cohen. Uh, you know, the president likes to talk yes. about um, his uh, role on The Apprentice. And uh, Michael Cohen painted a picture of the White House as The Sopranos. And, uh, you know, there's so many characters in this particular episode that I think it's only logical that Chairman Nadler would want to get to the bottom of what's going on with each of these particular people. Uh, the second point is, I think but, but last let me, night... I do want to ask, I do want to ask you that because I've been covering this for a couple of years and, and I can understand why folks at home would be frustrated and say, two years, you know, what is the, what is the result of this? Can, can you, as, sure. as you begin, and again, it's, it's, Democrats have just taken control of these committees, so they, they, they now have these investigative powers they did not have prior, yes, but sir. just in short form, explain to our viewers what you're focusing on, what, what, what you've seen the most convincing evidence of as, as it being worthwhile investigations. I think there are at least three issues. One, uh, was there a, a conspiracy between the uh, Trump organization or the Trump campaign and the Russians with regard to influencing the election of, election of 2016? Um, and how do we prevent that from happening again? Secondly, was there obstruction of justice uh, following this particular issue um, uh, surrounding the investigation of 2016? And then third, all the various um, you know, campaign finance violations and other uh, felonies that have been committed. Um, you know, basically, uh, last night a, a poll was released by Quinnipiac showing that 60% of the American people, almost 60%, think that the Democrats are doing the right thing and uh, serving as a check and balance on the Trump administration now. That being said, we still have to deliver on the pocketbook priorities of the American people, so we have to walk and chew gum at the same time, Jim. Right. Congressman.